Should I start? Ashal, is it live? Taking some time? I think we are live. Sir, yeah, we are live. Good. Please go ahead, sir. Can we start? Yeah, no. yeah. Hello, everyone. I, I welcome all the panelists to today's webinar. Dr. Niranjan Hiranandani Ji, President SOHM, Founder and Managing Director, Hiranandani Group of Companies. Mr. Ravi Ahuja, Co Chairman, National Council on Real Estate. Housing, SOHM, and Head Commercial Business LT, LNT Reality. Mr. Mike Holland, CEO, Embassy, Office Park. Mr. Arvind Kumar, Global Vice President, Indirect Entity Global Sourcing, INC. Mr. Arun Mohan, Senior Advocate. These are tough times. And I certain that together we can fight this situation and overcome the challenges. For this, we need to identify our challenges categorically and plan. Talking about commercial real estate segment, it looked quite promising in 2018 and attracted almost 60% investment to the real estate sector and has shown growth till now. Post COVID-19, everything is flipped as demand is marginalized. Coronavirus outbreak has led a reduction of demand for sure. The sluggish business environment will put rental under pressure. So the biggest impact of this situation in renegotiation of rental rates or lease payment arrangements, which are already being evaluated by the occupiers and developers. Cost management mechanism will be in focus for all the occupiers. Therefore, the expansion plan will be put on hold. There will be people preferring work from home and there will be ones looking for co-working spaces. Technology like artificial intelligence may compress demand for proper commercial office spaces. Slow down in decision making, resulting in different funding for the sector. As far as, as, far as the retail sector is concerned, there will be a dip in spending new malls completion can be delayed leasing activity will slow down retailer will delay or defer getting into new deal mall rentals are already under pressure this will not not only affect mall owners but will also affect developers low footfall has impacted developers debt servicing against the project post covid 2 the footfall of will limp to normalcy as people will take time to regain confidence public place in large number despite all the challenging setbacks the indian commercial real estate segment is expected to bounce back in near in new avatar in next 18 to 24 months only if we are prepared to change, change the old norms and ready to adopt to new normal. For example, we need to focus on technology enabled workspaces. This is going to be the demand for commercial spaces now onward. Social distancing led challenges to workspaces may lead to higher spaces per employees requirement. So office infrastructure must be bigger and better. Open greens 
treated fresh air system eco friendly materials will be added advantage to the work play work cases being offered by the developer demand for purpose built customized space may be observed marginal uptake localization of business or relocation of business by migrant businessmen from the small town will big rise to demand of office space in tier 2 and tier 3 city in long term in retail sector fundamental shift in mall operation by the owners is needed an increased focus on our air quality sanitation hygiene and awareness is what will bring people back to the mall developer need to be smart and move to innovative business models to survive in the market commercial real estate segment would require pd corrective and preventive actions empathy for the people across the public and private sector for the long term success this implies that in short term yes the indian commercial leasing and co working activities will be hit adversely however in longer term commercial real estate will be quicker to bounce back i am very hopeful and the measure by the government for taming the virus will help in the process and india will become favorite destination for manufacturing unit after the marginalization of china it's my view about the commercial real estate now over to mr niranjan hiranandani ji our president thanks a uh, very good afternoon to all of you thank you very much for being up and partnering with all of us thank you uh, to mr pradeep agarwal chairman of uh, asochams real estate thank you very much ravi ahuja co chairman of uh, our committee i must thank uh, our very very special invitee uh, a very very reputed and leadership role played by mr mike holland in the commercial real estate of india and uh, let me share with you that uh, he has been innovative in terms of uh, creating the first reit effective reit into india and has certainly been a, a precursor to something which uh, we're all desiring to have happen in the commercial real estate space so congratulations to mr mike holland again uh, for the kind of uh, leadership that you have played and your company has played in terms of uh, the uh, reit which is the rider for the funding and finance and we'll certainly like to hear from you sir as to what is exactly the role that uh, commercial will play in terms of the center of gravity which is going to take place in view of the situation which we do that mr arvind kumar thank you very much for being over here i think uh, you we will look forward to your ideas of what is happening in the space that you work on and of course uh, dr arun mohan uh, for giving us a picture on the legal issues relating to the situation for commercial uh, uh, real estate of course the challenges are there in the case of the retail space it is a bigger challenge because many of the people have zero business in terms of uh, the retail side and of course how this foreclosure of the uh, saying that this pandemic is a good reason for actually asking for time for payment so what is the issues really i think uh, Uh, we will definitely look to dr arun mohan to guide us and tell us as to what are the challenges in the field that we are really doing in terms uh, i must say mr ravi ahuja with lnt uh, taking the leadership role in real estate now it would be nice to hear from him as to what is happening and pradeep uh, ji you have really covered the aspects of it in terms of the holistic positions couple of things that i need to add and i think the first and foremost is what the prime minister said jaan pehle aur uske baad jahan which means sir uh, it means that life is most important and we care for the lives of the indians and we will certainly follow it by jahan which is livelihood and jahan is also the name of my grandson 
So livelihood becomes very important to me because it is my grandson's name also. So we have to shift to Jahan very quickly uh, if we have to understand that we are doing. The second part of it is what is the lockdown achieved and what is the lockdown failed in? The lockdown has achieved a wonderful thing, which is actually prevent the spread of virus, coronavirus, COVID-19. And I think India has been extremely successful in terms of the lockdown. Where has it failed? It has failed what I see in the TV of the migrant workers having to walk 1,000 kilometers uh, to go and walk back to the home. It's a shame on this country to be able to see migrant laborers work that way while my trains are lying in the yards and uh, buses are there in the depots. So I think it's a shame which we will not be able to face the people of India and it will remain in the tent of prosperity to say that we, I hope to God we will be forgiven for the act that we have not done, the neglect that we have done to the migrant laborers. The third most important thing is how do we really bring back confidence into the economy? And I think that's going to be a fairly significant role that we will have to play. And that is important because if you expect that people who are, uh, say, in America and want to invest into commercial space into India or give business to India, they're going to watch you very carefully. How soon are you going to bring back the economy into action? How quickly are you going to be able to recuperate from whatever has gone wrong? How quickly can we start and bring it back to normal? What is this new normal going to mean? Are we going to be able to see that the commercial spaces with safe distancing, which Pradeep ji just mentioned about, is going to be operational? Will it be an opportunity which India will see? Or is it going to be a downfall for India where other countries in the world will be able to take this leadership? I think, Mr. Mike Holland, you should point out to us as to what are these flags off that we need to do. And we would like to prepare a paper of representation to the government of India, the state governments, in order to see that the pitfalls, if any, from an international perspective are addressed in terms of this type of closure. As far as the government is concerned, in terms of the finance ministry, she has taken two positive roles in terms of it, in terms of saying that the time has been given to us in terms of the RERA regulations. Uh, I think it's a pittance. I think it's not enough. But I think anyway, it is something better than nothing. On the other hand, we do see uh, a difference in terms of the RBI bringing about a complete clean role and from a total vision perspective, I think the finance minister has done a fantastic, a fantabulous job actually to vision out what India as a country is going to do. And there are many, many, many positives in her statement in terms of the vision, which actually will take what the prime minister wants to be a $5 trillion economy, but the immediate steps are questionable. Not everybody agrees that the demand will be pushed up based on whatever action has been done. And there are questions from industry, questions from business, either whether on the demand side of the economy, she could have done more. Of course, I have also questioned it, and I have uh, said that we could have done more uh, in terms of the demand side of the economy. Uh, but who's asked to see? She has also said one thing, that this is not the end of the road, and she does not want to fire all the, all the bullets today and she is keeping certain ammunition for the future. So maybe the future is the time when we will be able to take it there. So commercial real estate, as uh, Pradeep ji has correctly said, is a great opportunity which is going to continue to grow. Safe distancing may mean two things. It may mean that people will have uh, to take more commercial space because the safe distancing will be become the new normal. Or it could be work from home, which means that there will be less people. But I would really like to see how other people have to state about this. My view is uh, different. My view is if the GDP of India grows, commercial real estate will definitely grow, irrespective of what the international people think or believe. So what we really need to do is to grow the future of India. And commercial real estate will also grow pari -pasu. We must also grow the ease of doing business in India so that the confidence of people will be more to India than any other country in the world. 
they talk about making this easy but the last 42 companies which are planning to leave china only two of them are looking to come into india on the manufacturing side 23 of the 42 are planning to go to vietnam so that's not a very healthy sign at the initial stage but i do see a lot of initiatives like the labor reforms done by the up government and by the madhya pradesh government being unprecedented it is fantastic unbelievable and i'm very happy that and i we fully have at iso champ complimented the governments on doing such thing and we are very very hopeful that this precedent in terms of ease of doing business will definitely attract people to come to india so we are on a positive story as far as india is concerned the lockdown has worked how we are going to do the withdrawal from the lockdown is a moot question we are watching and seeing that this could be also equally fruitful at this point of time there are questions as to whether we are doing it sufficiently enough but time will tell us what is there to be there we in industry continue to advise the government on the role they need to play in order to bring us out of this quagmire of problems which we will face because of lack of labor especially migrant labor lack of liquidity which the banks have too much liquidity in the my banks they have eight and a half lakh uh, crores that's a big amount of money which is not actually coming to industry but it is like back with the reserve bank of india so my friends i think india has great hope we've handled the first part of it efficiently i am certain that with the leadership of the prime minister the second part of it will be equally well handled some of the methods and steps are questionable by us but i'm sure that the, the road map ultimately in the minds of leadership are going to be sufficient to bring us back into the country our our leadership has huge amount of goals and ambitious government that we have i'm sure that this economy will come back to its honor so i'm very happy to address all of you today and i'm very happy that the team that we have here today to discuss this issue are sufficient your statements will be recorded your statements will be used for the purposes of representations to the government i'm going to be meeting in, on a webinar with the commerce ministry in within another half an hour uh, in fact on two platforms uh, we do meet uh, the urban ministry we do meet uh, the finance ministry we have been representing to the prime minister's office to the reserve bank governor and so on and so forth so we hope to take the views that you have put on the table today to the government that we thank you very much for this opportunity thank you and joining us please come back to us again and i promise you that we will try to do our level best to represent your views to the government so that we make things better for india and our, your ambition and my ambition is the same how can we make that change happen to india which will take it to the next stage and happiness thank you please keep safe don't do foolishness wear your masks keep safe distances except with your own immediate family take care of the elders extremely important because they are the ones who can, may not be as safe as you are so thank you very much for coming over here and i enjoy this platform because i have such wonderful company on this panel today thank you thank you and as a moderator as a dual role i play Niranjan Bhai. thank you for the insightful uh, and broad analysis on uh, on the commercial real estate and your engagement with governments um, niranjan bhai you've uh, just set the tone thank you um, ladies and gentlemen before we get into the next phase of our discussion uh, please put in your questions and we are here to take a question answer session at the end of the uh, session uh, niranjan bhai you just set the tone and you've given us a great background. It is not the first time that the commercial real estate uh, in India is witnessing challenges. We've seen challenges before. We've seen the pre-1991 uh, challenging times where the Indian economy was in dire straits uh, and so was the real estate. Uh, we've seen the post-2000 and the dot-com bust. Uh, we've also seen post that the international global uh, financial crisis and what that did 
to the commercial real estate industry. Uh, and now we're witnessing uh, an all new pandemic in, in the voice of COVID-19 in 2020. And if you allow me, uh, as, as I'd like to put my views um, and just try to understand how the global financial crisis uh, in the past uh, challenging environment of 2008 is different from uh, the current 2020 COVID challenge, essentially three uh, areas come to my mind. One, at that point in time, we did see an overheating of the economy, valuations were crazy, uh, private equity was chasing, we were going to tier three, four cities with developers going national. From that time till today in 2020, the crisis is a little different. We already, start, we already started seeing slowdown in residential, but commercial witnessed robustness. However, the commercial pricing were not as crazy as the valuations of 2008. They were quite steady and performing well and were giving decent returns to investors and the corporates were happy. I remember Bandra Kurla complex saw rentals in 2008 go as high as 450 and some of them also closed at 550 rupees a square foot a month. Uh, and some of them went to 600, 800 one-off deals uh, in Worli at CJ House. The second point of difference is at that time, 2008, we saw institutional ownership at a very nascent stage. From then to now, it's been a long way. And we're currently seeing very mature institutional ownership in commercial real estate. So much so that as you rightly said, Niranjan Bhai, the first REIT, and we have Mike Holland here with us who will take us through the journey and his experience is already a reality in India. That sets the tone for a huge capital market seen in the commercial real estate space. And finally, third in 2008 was witnessed with character of speculation. It was a seller's market, which is no longer the case. In 2020, we already had seen a lot of uh, crisis in the overall real estate sector with GST, RERA, DEMON, etc. The commercial real estate was in a way carved out, thankfully, uh, to the India services sector doing very well uh, from US organizations, uh, which have huge take up in the commercial reality. So in that sense, these three things really uh, differentiate between the challenging times we were and we are in. Where are we now? The pre and post COVID times, clearly we're looking at net absorption, Last calendar, 2019 calendar year, we saw almost 47 million square feet of net absorption. Uh, we currently, that, that was one of the peak uh, net absorptions India has seen in the top eight cities. The vacancy levels were as low as 5% across geographies. Rentals had already started moving up and were high and steady. Uh, all this and more. And what is the prediction now? with the lockdown and sir with the economy in a lockdown situation things are not looking good we are looking at two quarters down uh, this calendar year from a high of 47 million uh, the estimates could go anywhere but we're estimating at 28 to 32 million square feet uh, net absorption for this calendar year vacancies may go up depending on the increase in the supply should tenants and companies start surrendering space um, and so on and so forth. Transactions are already getting delayed and deferred. Uh, fortunately, many of them are not getting canceled yet. There are few which have. There's limited A-grade supply until 2022 in these top eight cities. The US corporations who have now gone on hold have already seen a 45% take up year on year of commercial real estate. 70% of our office take up is by IT, ITS companies. Thankfully, India has been competitive from a US dollar terms where we've pegged ourselves with the $1 rent in those times prior to 2008, 2006, when dollar was 40, 45 rupees to now when the dollar is 70, 75 rupees. And therefore the rents have hovered around the $1, keeping us competitive. So for the last about 10 years plus, uh, India has fortunately been competitive for the US economy. The new normal, we keep talking about it. I heard it from uh, Pradeep ji and from Niranjan bhai. 
what are these three, four, five areas I wanted to just share my views that the new, new normal may impact? Is the work from home uh, and a recent survey which was done, which showed almost 72% of the companies saying that they feel more than 50% of the staff will eventually work from home even after six months. Now that's a big statement to make. What are the impacts which will be seen by this? There will be a huge behavioral change. Will this cost be absorbed towards the employees, towards the electricity bills, broadband bills, the investment in office infrastructure at home? Is it enough for corporates to allow that? The security threats that are looming by clients who do not want security compromises, etc. Work from home may just become work close to home. There is a discussion going that why go travel two hours in metro cities all the way to home and back when you can have a smaller office closer to home. And this is what will drive some of the decisions. Will there be a substantial real estate cost saving for corporates is, is a question we all need to ask ourselves. The second area in my view, which will impact is the company's laser sharp focus. Everybody is looking at reducing cost uh, and liquidity. These are issues which corporates are facing. We heard Pradeep ji talk about rental negotiations uh, and that will certainly become the day of the, uh, the need of the day with so many expiries which are upcoming in terms of the tenures of corporates. Uh, the recent research suggests that almost 20 to 25% of the companies are gonna face expiries between 12 to 24 months from today. It is not easy to achieve a uh, reduction in cost when it comes to commercial real estate. The replacement value of fit outs, the institutional landlords who are now more resilient to corrections and can hold prices. And finally, it will all depend upon supply going up with vacancy rates going up, should there be surrender of space, which will impact uh, this. In my view, the third area is we've spoken enough. But one thing which I want to bring to everyone's notice is what COVID-19 has done is really accelerated the change and adoption towards digitization. Companies are looking, real estate organizations, real estate developers are looking at virtual meetings, CRM and sales functions to adopt digitization. Even in the construction field, we're looking at mechanization, precast prefab structures to save time and the delays which the construction workers are already creating a lot of fear and concern in the minds of the developers and from end users we're looking at big design changes there could be touchless access and touchless technologies going forward and sensor technologies uh, impacting elevators uh, lighting and what have you the fourth big area of uh, impact in my view is the health safety and hygiene that's what covid has taught us uh, it has taught us that if we do not make uh, immediate habitual and behavioral changes it may be fatal for us especially during these times till such times the vaccines is is, is going to be uh, invented uh, some of the areas that will be of importance is remote management of company assets, the robotic temperature scanners and automated scanners, the ventilation changes that may be required, and the live work play environment with nutrition and immunity getting their deserves place in these times of COVID, which will all lead to positive energy at the workplace. Finally, uh, the government, a role of that of a stakeholder it's about time that the government realizes that it needs to partner with real estate stakeholders. Uh, the government uh, should understand that the industry holds huge potential to create jobs, and that's what interests the economy. That's what will work for livelihood uh, of the economy. We have an area of slum redevelopment, which the government, if it starts taking ownership and plays role of partnership, in a city like Mumbai, it's playing havoc with COVID numbers spiraling up. 
can easily be tackled if this slum redevelopment authority uh, for last two decades would have done a good job at eradicating and replacing the slums and and the slum uh, the slum stairs would have got their houses uh, so all these areas need to be looked at uh, and favorable policies need to be devised. Finally, uh, as the lockdown opens up, we are entering uncharted territories. There would be winners and losers. Who would be the winners? In my view, the winners would be the early adopters of the new normal, who would have laser sharp focus on liquidity. They would conserve cash, cash is king, we understand that. And it's a once in a lifetime opportunity for corporates and their staff to develop these new habits and to learn how to sustain in the long term. Let us not waste the crisis as an opportunity that it brings to us. It brings to us a great moment to reinvent our business and ourselves. We must also remember that once the lockdown opens, we must not go only with a plan A, we should also have a backup plan B uh, to go to the market. It may be uh, it may be dangerous to just have one plan. And finally, I think we must all look at adding value as stakeholders uh, in the real estate, commercial real estate field. Uh, and it all starts with our clients. We learn and we deliver to them. Uh, and from there on, the entire value chain of commercial real estate. Those are my uh, submission and views, gentlemen. I would now like to uh, invite Mike Holland uh, to take us through some of his insights. Uh, let me have a quick introduction while Niranjan Bai gave a very good introduction to Mike. Mike is the CEO of Embassy Office Parks, uh, and it is the India's first and only listed REIT sponsored by Embassy Group and Blackstone. And the valuation, the market capitalization of that today stands at $3 billion uh, US dollars. Now that's huge and Mike will help us understand his journey to that and some of the insights during COVID and post-COVID times as to how we can utilize this tool called REIT besides his own general experience that he can share with us. Over to you, Mike. Great, thank you. I assume I'm off mute. Um, thank you, Ravi. Um, thank you in particular to um, Dr. Hiranandani. It's a pleasure to be on the same uh, forum as you. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing from Arvind Kumar from uh, NTT because uh, I often say that the most important people in an office REIT business is our, our, our occupiers, our occupiers along with our investors. And uh, every quarter, and we've just been through our quarterly earnings cycle, um, I dedicate a few days just to phoning up and spending a uh, significant amount of time talking to business leaders uh, and corporate real executives uh, who represent the 160 plus corporate occupiers uh, in our portfolio to get a flavor from them as to what the latest um, uh, feeling is about where their businesses are going because ultimately it's their businesses that pay the rent that allows us to pay the dividend distribution to our investors. So Arvind, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing uh, from you. Um, I'm just going to put out a, a, a set of different observations and points so that we can then move on to some Q&A and some discussions. But um, uh, with, with respect to Mr. Agrawal, um, you know, I, I, want to, I want to focus on some of the really big positives that uh, are here in India, and yes, we have a road bump. Um, we hope from a commercial real estate side that this will be a couple of quarters where the industry will pause and then we'll move back to something that's more normal because there's plenty of positives, particularly in the commercial real estate office space um, here in India. Ravi mentioned that we've come off of a record year in terms of uh, net absorption, close to 50 million square feet. In many of the markets, we, are, uh, we were in Q1 and we still are today, 
at record low vacancy. So that's something that's very, very different to the uh, GFC environment where we had a wave of new supply coming on and once that train had left the station, it takes a few years for that supply to come through. There's a lag. And so that acts as a drag on a market uh, when there's so much supply coming on stream. That's not the case today. In fact, I saw JLL reported in Q1 that supply year on year is down 40%, 4-0. And I think the, the comments Dr. Hiranandani made about labor is uh, and liquidity is certainly going to have um, an impact on supply that's coming on through. Now, for those of us who are in the industry, um, that it, that is a a positive in that uh, it helps to support uh, rentals in the market. Um, but you know, the the number one thing that we have to be really positive and optimistic about. Um, from commercial real estate in India is that we we are and we continue to be at the center of the one sector uh, which is technology which has demonstrated that it is uh, prospering and growing uh, through this pandemic period. Um, I, I just dug out some, some stats around the NASCOM type industries. Um, so in, in FY 2020, that technology sector, which is the foundation of most of the commercial office businesses in India, um, grew 7.7% last year. It's a $191 billion uh, sector with close to $150 billion of exports. It employs uh, nearly four and a half million people around the country. And, you know, a real positive about it, in my view, is that it creates great opportunity for young people um, who have had the opportunity to get uh, a good education to come into a sector that's not, not, not a, a, sun, uh, a sunset sector. It's definitely... Um, at, at the forefront. So that continues to be really, really positive. Many of our tenants, um, half of our tenants actually are in that technology sector and um, they continue to prosper. There were some companies that have said to me, you know, providing software as a service, they'll sign up for one or three year contracts and those contracts really are unaffected um, by these current uh, disruptions. I spoke to a top tier Indian uh, technology major who's focused on um, engineering for electric vehicles. Uh, they said this is a three year project. Yes, two months um, have, been, have been a bumpy road as we've had to put people off and work, to work from home. But fundamentally, our business is sound. Our people are coming back to the office and so on. So I don't mean to make light of the challenges that are out there. There's certainly uh, many challenges, and I really also um, appreciate the comments about, you know, shift shifting to Jahan. And I didn't know um, that, that that meant livelihood, but uh, um, thank you again, Dr. Hiranandani. I think it's really important that in a controlled way we do get back to work and get back to business. Um, and it's it's it, when when Dr. Hernandani was asking about specific measures that might be taken. Um, the other day, uh, somebody suggested to me about um, a number of the five-star hotels. They're trying to um, sustain their businesses, and th and that means jobs. They they might be targeted at you know, the top socioeconomic sector. But the people who are working in five-star hotels come from all levels of society. And people coming out and doing uh, food deliveries from five-star hotels. And the comment was made, well, it's just too expensive. We get taxed at those five-star rates. Now, I think that some sort of interim short-term tax holiday that allows these types of industries to come up with new ways of working that allows their product to be 
more affordable in these difficult times. Um, and it's not just five star hotels, but these delivery mechanisms um, for for uh, F and B, I think that might be a, a practical um, uh, change that we would make. The the other the other positive that I would say is, and and I'm echoing um, the words from uh, uh, Mr. Irfan Razak, who um, is the chairman of Prestige Group. That I remember when we had the demonetization. Um, change that was made. I remember hearing him speak and say, you know, look, we in India are very resilient. We've had these road bumps before. And he said, and I thought about it and it, it rang a bell. He said, you know, in six months time, we'll be through this because we're a young growing country with energy and resilience. The the government is trying to do the right thing in, in reducing bureaucracy, in putting in place uh, better systems. The comment about ease of doing business, I, I totally um, would, would echo that. Continuing streamlining um, process and, 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 and administration. Um, so before I get on to the core real estate, I would say a key, a key area is to support the technology industry because that is the industry of the future that is the industry that's employing uh, these uh, millions of young people um, in world-class jobs um, providing services that are frankly much more sophisticated than they were a decade ago um, i think the investors that i speak to from around the world clearly understand today that this is not a BPO call center story. This is a story about uh, automotive companies that are designing the, the, the software and eat, uh, entertainment systems for top class German vehicles all over the world. You know, these are the people who are running e-commerce for the US retail industry. Um, it, it, this is where cloud and data and digital for the world is being transformed. So the more that central government can support our customer base, um, I believe the more that we can prosper. Um, so three, three changes that I'll just uh, talk through. So demand, supply and product. Um, Demand, we spoke about, we're coming off record demand. Our belief is that for a couple of quarters, this quarter and the next quarter, um, occupiers will pause because they've got the challenge of running their existing businesses, particularly the remote work from home side of things. As they get through that period, they will they will look back, strategize, is our old strategy going to work for the future? What do we need to modify? And therefore, what's our, 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 our strategy going ahead? So for a couple of quarters, I, I, I don't think, and this is based on conversations with those occupiers, I don't think we're going to see much in the way of transactions and volumes. Um, but that's not to say that the industry is uh, moribund or going backwards. Actually, as I say, it's it's the one sector worldwide that is proving its metal. Um, the supply side, as I mentioned, going really off a cliff, um, that will support rentals as we go forward. Um, the discussion about uh, hub and spoke, will people work closer to home? Not sure. I think we, 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 we're all going to work through that one. What is going to be required by the end of this year as corporate occupiers figure out the strategy for the road ahead, uh, what is going to be required is more flexibility from some elements of the uh, landlord community. And so while I do think that co-working will be under pressure because primarily of the densification side of things, one, and two, the short-term um, license or lease covenants with relatively small-scale players. Those two things are, are pressure.
but on the other hand, the potential to offer some level of flexibility as we come out of this uh, decision-making hiatus may well work in the favor of um, the co-working players. The, the, the other major issue which has been mentioned, and, and I, think, I think we've formed our view about where we're going on the spectrum that is at one end of the spectrum, de-densification, and at the other end of the spectrum, the work from home conversation, particularly stimulated by the report from TCS at their earning of their 2525 program. And I, I just want to clarify on that. My read of that was not that they were saying, as was reported in many newspapers, that 75% of their employees would work from home. It's not saying that. They explicitly said the 2525 program was an objective that in five years' time, at any one time, only 25% of their employees would be in the office. Now, what that means is that you take into account, I spoke to an investment bank who has 5,000 people in Bangalore. They told me that they have provision of 80, 80 workstations for every 100 employees that are there in the office. Because at any one time, you would have people on holiday, people out seeing clients, people traveling on business, people off sick, and so on and so forth. So a significant proportion for that bank, 20% of their employee base, is not in the office at any one time anyway. You also have the scenario that the great large Indian IT services companies, and TCS in particular, global leader, those companies, many of their people in any event are sitting in their clients' offices. I, I'm not sure what that percentage is. I'm hazarding a guess at 15 to 20 percent of their people are sitting off-site. Actually, in many of my tenants' offices, the global uh, captive centers, the largely international companies, um, so there will be people from the TCSs and the Wipros and the Infosys sitting in that office. So you can start to see how you can quickly get up to a 50% number are out of the office in any event. Um, the 25, 25, I can see that being a stretch target. And then at, at the other end of the spectrum, I spoke to another bank who was saying, with de-densification, I can only fit 28% of my headcount into my January office space. So how do I deal with that? And so you end up in a scenario that maybe when that pause comes off in December, you could hypothesize there'll be a surge in demand. And at the other end, you could say of that spectrum, but I've got that flexible working. We think it will end up being a hybrid. You know, we, the conversations I've had, people have spoken about substandard digital infrastructure at home uh, and, and attendant productivity problems, but that can be fixed. You can pay to fix that and get good broadband um, at home. Suboptimal physical infrastructure. So the whole actually beautiful thing about Indian families, often you'll have three generations living in the same apartment, living in the same place. But from a work perspective, that's not necessarily optimal. Um, many people pointed out to me the demographic of many of the people working in our type of office parks is often a, a young 20-something, often single or newly married, living in rented accommodation. A lot of young guys particularly living in PG accommodation. And more than one occupier spoke to me about their concern at their duty of care to having young, young men working on the edge of their bed with a laptop for two months, and what was the responsibility of the company towards those individuals who were staying at places where they didn't have uh, cooking facilities, where they didn't have any access to gyms and sports and so on. But most importantly, the thing that has clearly come through is the issue about uh, professional learning, and that is done through the office community, um, mentoring 
that one is really talking about a young demographic of people who are, and again, another super thing about working in Asia and India for me in the last 25 years. Mike, I'm going to, uh, I'm, may I be excused? Uh, I've got yeah. Mr. Piyush Goel in five minutes, so I have sure. to drop. So, uh, but I'm, we are recording your talk and I'm certainly going to do it. And I'm going to look forward, uh, Pratip Ji, if you can collect all the points and then prepare it so that we can submit it to uh, the powers that be so that we can take it forward. Please excuse me, Mike, because this was not anticipated. You, sir. Sorry, Mr. and the others. Uh, uh, I have certainly heard the recording which has been done. Thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you, sir. But so, uh, so just to, to, to wrap up on that, the, 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 what I was going to say is young people in Asia have a hunger and thirst for learning that is exceptional and frankly, in my view, very different from Western Europe and North America. I've seen the way that young people want to go to their office, not just to execute on tasks, but actually to learn and to build their career. So whether it be that the company wants to um, put the company culture on the individual, whether it be that a young person, as we all were, needed to learn the discipline of work and the discipline of how you, how you, get, a, you, you get ahead in your career, learn from each other, network at a career level, and also simply live, have a friendship. That's why one of the business leaders said to me, for many of his people, the office is their home. That was how he described it. So, so my, you know, my, my conclusion around the work from home and the de-densification, I think they will both live together. Um, I, I think it'll be a bit of both. There will definitely be a higher focus on health, safety, uh, and environment for, for corporate occupiers and their people, and that's a good thing. Um, and what that will mean is that there'll be a continuing trend in our view to higher quality product um, run in a more professional, globally relevant manner. So um, I'll, I'll wrap up to leave some time for others and Q&A, but I don't see it as all doom and gloom. Definitely there's a pause, uh, but we, the commercial office industry in India, caters to the core of the most successful sector um, it, 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 that's, that's working in the world today, that's technology. So uh, we, should, we should feel positive about that. Ravi, I'll, I'll stop. Yes, thank you, Mike, uh, for the insightful uh, discussion. And hopefully, we'll hear from you on the question answers as well. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me invite Arvind Kumar, who's now with us. Arvind, thank you firstly for making time. I know you are in the US and it's 5 a.m. over there. Thank you for being with us. Your experience uh, and your discussion here will immensely benefit us. Arvind is a global vice president of Indirex at NTT Global Sourcing, and the headquarters are in Plano, Texas in the US, and he specializes in procurement. Uh, he does he is in charge of various dozens of countries where they run operations. Arvind, over to you, please. Thank you. Thanks a lot and good morning, everybody from the US. Right, I've had a pleasure of working with many of you over the past so many years because I moved to India in 2012 from the US and I had a lot of opportunity to engage in the real estate space, working with Ravi, Mike, and Dr. Hiranandani himself in his properties. Something very interesting, you know, and I'm glad to be part of this session because, you know, it's uh, India is a, a great place. Always love to be there. I'm from there. And uh, over the years, I feel India has become a great market, you know, for technology and other related services. But as you can all imagine, in the new normal, right, tenants are having a lot of debates and a lot of us are under intense pressure. One of the things to remember, as Mike was talking about, India has amazing potential, great talent, and it's not about the old BPO days, right? Those are gone. This is about the talent worker. It has to do with varying areas of technology, skills, financials, non-financial areas, all sectors that we manage on an India basis and a global basis. One important aspect coming out of this COVID scenario is that it is taking a toll on businesses. I'm sure all of you can understand 
that the India receive India is on sometimes the receiving end of what is happening in the rest of the world, right? If I, as a service provider, as NTT group of companies, and we occupy a substantial space in India with many of our divisions across tier one cities, uh, like anybody else, is we are impacted and we move work to India based on what we need to do in the business and what we offer to customers. Today, when some of our customers are taking an impact in their sector, it has a direct impact in what we can do and cannot do in the country, number one. Number two, something important to consider is in the case of India, uh, in the past so many years that I've been around working there, real estate costs have gone up a lot. I'm sure all of you understand the land value, the appreciation values, and just the overall cost of uh, you know, construction and cost of managing has gone up drastically. And depending on which part of India you are in and which state and which location within the city, everything had a big variance. And I have seen working with Ravi in some deals where we were you know, in Mumbai and Navi Mumbai looking at deals, trying to manage and cost optimize them. And part of that resulted in two things, right? We found, tried to find the best partner in the, in the development, developer space, tried to find the best cost per square feet, and in the end, we ended up densifying the space to maximize the opportunity to staff people because you know the cost of doing business on the real estate side was intensely higher. And it kept growing higher and higher. Now, we accommodated it. One of the things I think people have to consider now, given where business is, especially if I take India as a reference. In the past, Mike, to your point, a lot of things you mentioned are absolutely correct. You know, the PG accommodation, the lack of home infrastructure, the, the three generations of family living, right? We were not used to it. And something important for everybody to know, the work was a place to let go of some of those things. Like people came to work for good mental balance. People came to work because there's a social environment. You have a network outside of family, outside of friends to come work, learn, and uh, enjoy life a bit and then go back. So there was a pressure release system. Certainly, if I take India for an example, today some of those are impacted, right? And people, as you, Mike, uh, absolutely are correct. In the PG world, you're living in an you know eight by eight or eight by ten area. How do you manage, right? It is hard. It's not easy. Infrastructure challenge, space challenge, and now you're restricted to an environment, right? Cannot go out. It has an impact, and not only on productivity sometimes, but also on mental mental state. But at the same time. I want to share some interesting dynamics happening in our company. As you all imagine, over the years, when we went into these nice campuses and big facilities, we created this right space and medium for people to work and bring in a combination of technology and, and, and capabilities to merge together. So when, in those days, we tried to talk about sometimes having a hybrid worker, I would say not remote, but certain uh, definition of worker that can work sometimes at home, sometimes within the office, outside of certain roles like sales and others that are possible to be remote, yeah, right? It's not a problem. There were always challenges where people pushed back at the employee level or employer level in the teams where they said it's not possible for so many reasons, we can never do that. COVID came and changed a lot of those things. Today, Interestingly, I would share with all of you that productivity in many of the cases is higher than ever before. People are stepping up and just because I think the way we are all to do a better job, they're delivering more and more and are accommodating in these challenging times and, and, and ways we work still to maintain a work-life balance and still execute above expectations. That's the amazing part of the country and amazing part of the people on a global basis, especially in India. So having said that, and on one hand, we have business pressure from clients we support, there is a new normal coming up, which is going to be what I call the transformation of the workplace. There is no more going to be the company now stuck under the pressure of high cost of real estate, which I think has to be, has to come down and has to adjust itself. I'm hoping it will. There will be a new normal where people will have to change and developers will have to accommodate. If you have to have a newer space design and you need increased space, I can't pay it at the same rental cost today that I pay. It's not affordable, right? I can't do it. Third, 
there will be a new normal where we will move more to a home-based working and i would say it's a flexible workplace because the uh, the ability to leverage technology with people's ability to work and today the tools that we have tested and tried in the next in the last three four months from a bcp drp perspective has really excelled and has allowed us to see and demonstrate that that is possible which also means something important for all of you know from the western world where business generates clients that we support and in turn we sit in your in your space working and supporting are changing their approaches are having new demands are okay with a remote working model right so what is important here is for us as a company as a service provider to determine and understand what is the right right blend of work in the, at an office work at a home managing the transformation of the workplace in terms of design right are we going to again densify are we going to restructure the space or what kind of space are we going to design and develop which is more like a meeting slash co-working environment where people come and leverage have your team meetings have your one-off things have your you know key sessions of collaboration innovation and then you work at home to also allowing the people to understand that we need to develop a role responsibility based structure that defines the new working type model right not everybody can work at home i am a remote worker for the last 16 years globally so i understand i can work in this space i am on the road all the time but is it the same for my peer and colleague no even in the us not all my colleagues are happy to work at home they need that outlet they need that ability to get away and work in an environment so i think we will never go to a hundred percent work at home model it's not possible whether it's india or it's america right but i think it's how we as companies are going to work with our clients and work with our people and understand the best medium that is defining the worker trying to figure out the right working style and then managing the cost and efficiency that come with it to make a system that allows job creation allows delivery of good product output and maximizes the benefit of how the industry will work in terms of real estate i know you're in a, in a in a tough position because you have standard costs you have certain costs you build certain costs you have to recoup certain debts to manage so it's not easy no doubt but at the same time i think we together have to find a medium between the developers and the tenants to make sure we both create an optimum model that supports the new way of working and supports our clients. At the same time, I think it's a big responsibility in terms of health, safety, and maintenance of facilities. In many cases, Mike, as you mentioned, a lot of facilities, people didn't care a lot at the landlord level. I've seen it myself in India. And I'm hoping that this will bring a better awareness and people will start maintaining and creating better product and after creating a better product, maintaining the product. That's where sometimes India struggles that we need to see an opportunity to be managed. Net overall, I think in terms of the economy and how we are managing, there is a hit on many aspects of business. If you take the travel sector, it's in a big mess. You take uh, you know, certain other sectors on service side, depending on lockdown, got a hit. But overall, the, the real estate sector on the commercial side will thrive again over time. But one thing is very clear and I want to share with all of you is that we will restructure the way we work, right? That is a given. It is not a, a thought that is not going to change. But it is about how we, one of the CEOs I work with in the US, he coined a term called digital. That is physical and digital coming together. That's very, very important. So I think also one thing it has done, not only has it gone to increase productivity, but also it has allowed us to rethink of how we can hire different people. For example, there were many uh, mothers or women that because of the night shift and because of the challenges today could not work or felt a risk or family constraints could not come to work. They ended up quitting or trying to find a different job. Today, the new world allows us because of technology, because of the ability to work from home and in a flexi environment can actually accommodate new workers to come into the system which is great also it creates an opportunity for me today to not go find a candidate in delhi and fly him all the way to bangalore because my head office is in bangalore that was a killing on the system because not only are we 
pushing more pressure onto the system in terms of transport, challenges, congestion. But also we are relocating people from their homes and families to go take a job because they want to be successful and, and, and make a change. Today, it will allow us to hire talent where they are and relook at the way we position them, which also means I strongly believe that we will need to create a different way of real estate in terms of working. We don't need these big, massive IT campuses that are thousands and thousands of people being you know, pushed into. Rather, we need a distributed delivery model, which allows people to stay, work, and be closer to that environment. For example, I love the, you know, you know I've been evaluating real estate for a long time, and we were always working with co-working companies. I feel now there's a better time than ever before for them to thrive because I would like to look at hub and spoke model. Why do I need to send somebody three hours away one way when I could create a distributed delivery model of offices as needed, especially if we are going to be in a flexible workspace, I don't need everybody to come to an office every day. I need that outlet. I need that opportunity to collaborate, work together or have a team get together for a day or two. And that's all the space I need. Therefore, do I really need to push everybody into one domain and try to force them to work there and again bring them back into another level. So net net, like I said, it is going to be a challenge. It is going to be a change. And what's exciting for me is that we will truly find a medium to work with each other because we cannot do away with offices, right? I think that's unrealistic. But at the same time, we were not going to reinvest in that same scale and size with the current situation and the new future way of working, which has challenged everybody. And now people have adopted to it. To manage i think it's in india it's a different challenge in america it's a different challenge but overall i think for me uh, is how do we work together make sure that we all participate make sure we all accommodate and through these tough times make it viable for us so that we can trust our developer partners make sure you're supporting us to our challenges because in the end if i don't have business and i shut down there is no use for you. You know, you're going to struggle worse than I am, right? Because you have standard costs for many, many years to come. So it is a collaboration economy with all of us. And in the end, what I would like to really share before we go into Q&A is people have to really, uh, you know, understand and evaluate how things work. But there is one thing very clear here, right? That the, P, the way person worked yesterday is not the way they will work tomorrow. We will need to understand and address the cost impacts of business because we are all facing it and see what that means. We need to ensure that safety, well-being and managing our campuses with our asset management partners in the, in the business, the IPCs with the landlords are really kept up to par and are invested in. And overall, you know, create an environment that allows us to both balance our cost to value that we bring to our employees and in the end, ensure that we are both viable and sustainable in the long run and continue to provide jobs and opportunities and, and make India a great country it is and bring more value to what we are doing. For your, thank you, Arvind. Great for your insightful uh, uh, talk here. I would now like to invite Dr. Arun Mohan. Dr. Arun Mohan is a senior advocate and will share his views, please. Namaskar, everyone. Namaskar. I could not agree with the speakers more, with the speakers before me, on the various sector specific problems, issues, proposals, and thoughts they have put forward. They are all very valid. Only one part I would like to add on that, and that is when it comes to commercial real estate, today, let us not look to the high end. Let us also focus on the mid end and the lower mid end. Because there is a lot of scope there and it needs attention. Why that sector has not been looked after is a, pro a problem I'm going to say a little later is the rent control laws. Apart from that, I have nothing useful to add except my limit. What all my learned colleagues have said, and I think it has been a learning for me, further for my work. I come now to my main part. The cost of doing business, 
depends on the quality of laws and justice delivery systems for that sector. If the laws are poor quality, if the justice is delayed, two things happen. A, it operates as a drag. B, it adds to the costs. And there is also a third thing. It then reduces the transactions with only those whom which there is trust and does not spread to all those who are available to transact because there is neither tailored law nor adequate cover of laws protection in case of problems. And we have seen how investors in real estate, especially in various housing and other kinds, have suffered. And today, that lack of confidence is making it more difficult. The wrongs of some are being, the brunt is borne by the others. One more thing I would like to add here. The commercial real estate is not to be looked at only as a high-end office, or as I said earlier, the mid-end or the end, lower mid, but also, let us take warehousing, industrial, and other related activities, which are all part of commercial renting, commercial real estate. Finally, the lesson is one, unless the tenant is going to make a utility in terms of rupees or in terms of dollars, if it's a foreign company, from what the rent is being paid, he will not pay that rent. And if that rent is not paid, then there is vacancy, the whole market is affected. And it also affects the market in ways more than one as in the direct, indirect, and induced effect. But where, where stands the quality of our laws and court delays? I've been working on this aspect for quite some time. And I feel that it is like, I'll take the analogy here, which I often mention. All of us drive a vehicle, and our vehicles give us something around six depending on the size, say 10 to 12 or 14 kilometers to a liter. Because the engines, the design, everything is efficient. I would request the participants to consider that if, the, or if laws were tailored to the needs of today, and when I say today, I refer to 25th March, when we entered into the lockdown, how short they were of the requirement. And now, as my learned colleagues have said here, after the corona, things are going to change, change drastically. We, and it is that vision for that change, which has to be recognized today and not simply wait for reactive later and say, yes, this is going to change, and these are the laws we need. In 1882, Transfer of Property Act is no longer fit for today. The Contract Act of 1872 needs a change. There are so many fields with regard to real estate, renting, or let me put it on a wider plank, more efficient usage, which can, where we can have reduce costs, say other savings, and get greater utility to all concerned if the laws were tailored and the justice delivery system, at least for this sector, wasn't slow. Friends, it is my belief that putting in a little effort here first makes the policy. Now, the thoughts expressed on policy are really appreciable, but that policy has to be implemented. And implementation of policy, the next step is proper legislation and rules, which are tailored to the need. Let me ask today, in all these big buildings that we see in our countryside, modern, 
the maintenance, the managerial issues, by what law they are covered. There is no specific law. It is left to the contract. Again, there is difficulty that the mid end and the lower mid end doesn't even get that benefit of that contract, whatever, at least the high end, the reputation ensures. So it's not the reputation, it's the law that we have to be dependent on. Friends, if once you, we all can take all the stakeholders, let us take it, the investor, the owner, the ultimately the renter, the others involved, and say, all right, each one of you, what do you really want in terms of your legal, tailored legal rules? And then we come forward with a balance between the competing demands of all concerned, and then frame those rules. Plus, we also look forward to having a possible separate authority to decide disputes within a few months of their accrual. Because once again here, let me tell you that a lot of people wish to benefit today by the delays that occur in courts. On the other end, there are those who, who do not enter into a transaction because they fear litigation. Either way, it is harmful to the economy as a whole and to this sector in particular. But it is collection of thoughts which will be the first step only thereafter the second of tailored rules and systems to uh, decide disputes would really arise. What those thoughts, what those laws would be? Now, today, there are available plenty of material on what those laws could be. But then again, they are not necessarily India specific. The law has to look to the local conditions, the local psychology, the people here, and then take the situation, the general prevailing circumstances and tailor itself accordingly. It is there if you are, if we all are able to put in a little effort and also move in this direction, I'm sure we can cut down on the costs and with cut, cut down costs, increased confidence in the developer or the owner and facilitating the renting transaction because more and more rentals will now be subject matter of commercial property, not ownership as it was in the past. We would be able to give a big support to the sector. This is what I wish to say with regard to the lawmaking and the rules for real estate. Corona COVID-19 has given us an opportunity. It has been started with labor, but let us also start on this. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Mon. Uh, very quickly, we have a couple of questions to take and then uh, we can uh, conclude. Uh, one question we have received uh, is for Mike Holland. Mike, uh, uh, you mentioned about pause and uh, the gentleman who's made this question would like to know that uh, being India's first free post that we've not seen some of the other developers in terms of regulatory, is there a pause there or uh, is it is the environment still favorable uh, for new listings uh, and particularly post COVID times? How do you see this? Yeah, I think uh, for the right portfolio uh, and the right management team of that portfolio, the um, there is uncertainty, uh, but that uncertainty will pass. It's just a question of how long is it one quarter, three quarters, who knows? Um, it, the, 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 if the product is good, if the 
covenant behind it, which means the occupiers who are in that portfolio and the management team is proven, um, then I, I think, yes, there, there's, there is room for more REITs and we hope that more will emerge um, and that a deeper uh, and broader REIT industry does come along, not just for offices, although I think offices is the um, the most predictable side of it, but you know, we already have as a component of a trust listed in Singapore, there is a there is an office and industrial um, trust similar to a REIT, um, a Send us India trust. They have industrial. I think in due course, as that segment uh, matures, you 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 might see um, potential for a a REIT coming out in the industrial space. I mean, the key that you've got to have is a portfolio that is predictable and generating a reliable income stream. Um, and so it doesn't lend itself to anything that is, is really transactional in terms of like a, a, a development, a trader developer type of mechanism. Um, but yes, there, there, there is more room and we would welcome um, more, more such REITs coming through. Thank you, Mike. Uh, we have a question for Dr. Mohan uh, by Avni Shah. She would like to understand, particularly in the office segment, uh, what this session is about mostly office segment. We have a separate retail and industrial coming up shortly. Uh, about the force major and the rental payments that you spoke about, uh, and, and, and how does the law behave? Should a tenant request for deferment uh, or waiver? Well, these things have started only now virtually for the first time earlier it was rising rising so it was the tenant holding back on the lower rent now the tenant is rightly unable to afford the agreed rent is the audio going on yes the tenant is unable to afford the agreed rent so it becomes a difficult situation now there are two parts a the terms of the lease agreement which is there b i am expecting some kind of legislation to strike a balance between the two sides to simply say not pay anything is as wrong would be when the place is locked in to say pay everything where that balance is struck it all depends on either legislation comes in or there is some but the court decision as you the question might be to me, will to large extent depend on what is the terms of a particular lease? Because as I know from my experience, that when these leases are drafted, the, the necessary attention to these clauses is not always paid. They are copied from some earlier draft and cut and paste. And that is what might create trouble with some cases. Please. Sure. Thank you. Uh, we have a question for Arvin. Arvin, uh, Mr. S.K. Roy has asked a question as to what you feel as an end user of office space is the future of uh, commercial real estate in tier two locations with occupiers uh, beyond the metros. Great, thanks, Ravi. For me, I think it's a great potential because I really believe that the current way of working and especially in the technology world and give, it's now borders which means it is not pushing anymore my mandate to go bring and hire the lowest uh, the closest level talent possible in that city or within the tier one cities i truly believe this model and segment will open up to like dr arun is saying will open up to other status of the business will open up to other cities and because there is talent everywhere in india again i truly believe it should not be that we should migrate people everywhere possible to and bring them to one core group in the in the country right and one core city so there's a great potential but the key is if we have to create infrastructure in tier two cities let's make sure that we do keep in touch with what the new expectations will be and do build a good product let's not create average products and push real estate that makes no sense and that doesn't tie up and one of the challenges in india as i've seen over the years is you know, people like Embassy Group, uh, Prestige Group have done a great job. Uh, Iran Andani, sir, himself, 
but there are many developers who lack sometimes the knowledge and the insight into how to build a good facility and how to cater to the right levels of it you know we're always trying to maximize the cost of uh, opportunity as a developer and that's something that needs to change for us to really leverage tier two cities and and maximize this opportunity in the future thank you Arvin. uh not taking much time uh I would like to now wrap the session uh, with a summary and a conclusion. Uh, very quickly, uh, knowing that we are restricted for time, but I'll take this time just to quickly summarize uh, what we heard from Pradeep ji, who started the session. He spoke about the slowdown. He spoke about uh, the rentals going down, the new normal, and renegotiations may be the need of the day um, or may, may come up as, as a future event. Niranjan Bhai spoke about Jan and Jahan, the migrant labor uh, situation and how the government could do much better uh, and the need for the economy to start. Uh, and his efforts are, uh, are, are very welcome uh, to lies with the government and the finance ministry to get SOPs for the industry. Mike spoke about technology, about young people. Uh, he also spoke about the need for amenities, uh, you know, in food, et cetera. Uh, and hospitality, how that plays a role uh, in office real estate. He spoke about nature of work that India does, uh, right? The value chain, not necessarily only BPOs, auto, e-commerce, cloud data, etc. The need for flexibility for landlords. Uh, the example of TCS, Mike. Thanks for clarifying. That did become a big uh, news in India, um, and uh, and some in some quarters was misinterpreted. Thanks for clarifying that. Uh, we spoke about de-densification and its 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 impact um, uh, and the balancing impact of work from home, Mike. Thanks. Arvind, you spoke about uh, India and the talent it has, and, and that's the reason why uh, a lot of organizations overseas are looking to offshore uh, even now and in the future. Um, the cost, which are going up, uh, but at the same time, the value of the skill uh, and the talent. Uh, you spoke about uh, transportation. You spoke about balance of work and home. Uh, the fidgetal point, of course, it's, it's driven home, the point, distributed workspace, and the new ways of doing work. Um, thank you, everybody. It's been a great session. Uh, I'm looking forward to going through the recordings and sharing with you all. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all of you. I thank you. Thank you, Arvind. Thank you, Aaron Mohan, and thanks, Ravi Aoudhya. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We will log off. Thank you. Yes.